one of you. Hey, welcome. Okay, we'll start the class sitting in Kasana uh, with a block, probably, hmm? maybe even two. Treat yourself. I think I might be the first yoga teachers to start sporting this polar neck uh, and shorts look. <laughs> but I'm sure, I feel confident it's going to catch on. <laughs> Who wouldn't? <laughs> so, uh, gap between the legs and the pelvis, buttock legs drawn out and back. <laughs> it's a look, isn't it? It's a strong look. And palms face up. Caramel. I like that. <laughs> palms up. So this palms up is a receiving uh, sort of gesture. And the name of the gesture is Jnana. Jnana. Uh, and some pronunciations in some regions of India uh, may be pronounced Jnana. G-N-A, uh, Gnya. Means to know. So Jnana Mudra. So you've got this receiving vibe, but you can probably feel it. Plus you've got your index finger and thumb tip touching, which brings this sort of uh, focus. So you're focused on receptivity. A bit like a sort of radio telescope, satellite dish, receptive, but focused on receptivity, open to receptivity. And breathing, of course. And maybe that movement comes. Uh, a lot of what happens in yoga uh, isn't done by a yogin. <laughs> it just happens. You know, like uh, if you're dancing, you know, not, you, after a while the dance takes over <clears throat> and there's nobody doing it. And that's the, the exact precise joy of dancing. Is that there's no, you know, eventually no, there's no body who's sort of contriving it and doing it. And this is the same for so many things we could talk about. So receptivity, you relax the buttocks. What happens in the body happens in the mind. What happens in the mind happens in the body. That's a cool piece of information <clears throat> because sometimes we try for a, a long time to adjust the mind with the mind and it doesn't always work, but you can adjust the mind with the body. You can let go of tension in the buttocks. And then that which drives that symptom, the cause of that symptom releases too. Hmm? <clears throat> and that goes for the buttocks. I think the buttocks are a particular area uh, we, we hold uh, quite subtly. It's a good area to hide tension from ourselves but it's also the, uh, everywhere else too, in the thighs. And so the process becomes one of giving. And of course the Brighton Buddhist Center uh, top uh, matika, I'm gonna call it, is a really conducive environment to relaxation, to giving, it's pretty, the sun shines in here. So it's, not, it's empty of grasping, a parigraha. It's about trust and the uh, giving that that engenders automatically or naturally or spontaneously. It's a letting go, which isn't <laughs> done by anybody. And that letting, letting go is driven by direct, immediate uh, insight, vipassana, or vipassana in Pali. Vipassana comes from a root pash, uh, the sort of root word of that whole word is pash, which means to see. Now give your fingers a little, uh, a little wiggle. Um, we'll explore through the class what it is that we are seeing <laughs> that conduces to this release. Change the cross of your legs so the other one's in front. Okay, good job. And draw the butter pleasure out and back. You might notice, I don't know if it's useful to you, but when I draw the butter flesh on one side, I lean to the other. 
not only that, but I lean slightly forwards as well. That just helps for my body anyway, maybe it will help for yours too, to feel towards the inner front edge of the uh, sitting bones, the ischial tuberosities. Palms up again. So this is Sukhasana, sometimes called Bhadrasana, sometimes called Swastikasana, but less commonly because of negative associations with the word Swastika, obviously. <laughs> But uh, we know originally, of course, a swastika or swastika in um, Sanskrit was a Buddhist uh, symbol. And unfortunately, that got appropriated horribly. But originally, it was a Buddhist symbol, and many Buddhas have a, a swastika on their chest. But anyway, that's a little backstory. <laughs> this pose is known variously as uh, those different names Bhadrasana meaning good, Sukhasana also meaning good, actually. And suastika, uh, you know, if you translate the Sanskrit, means su, which is good, and then the astika means it is, it just means it is good. Anyway, the pose is different from other poses like siddhasana because there's definitely a gap between the legs and pelvis. It's one of the uh, marks that you can uh, recognize the pose by. We've got our jnana mudra. Our hands are obviously sensitive. You can feel, I don't know what you can feel. Ting For me, I can feel tingling. It's nothing that I'm expecting. I'm, I'm not sort of limiting the body to, you know, any ideas that I might have. It just is. It's like this. It's, uh... So a friend of mine, someone I haven't seen for years and years, actually, Matt Noid, a very lovely man, a very funny man, he once made me a, a screen print of Arjun Samedo, who I'm a big fan of, and it was like a comedy picture of Arjun Samedo, and underneath it said, it's like this, right? Because that's kind of what he says nearly all the time. <laughs> So, you know, it's like this is, is what it is, sort of thing, you know. It's this, <laughs> rather than labeling it or, you know, putting the uh, ocean in a cup as uh... St. Augustine once said, don't put the ocean in a cup, throw the cup into the ocean. Right? Now we're going to focus our attention on the heart in an uncomplicated way, in a natural way. Uh, empty of grasping, not reaching out, upadana, reaching out. So we're not reaching out. And we're not involved in a sense at all. It's just relaxation Saturday morning. Yeah. So there's so many pointers like santosha, contentment. So pointing to attention to the heart, and then we're going to just bring energy into the heart. And we're going to do that by taking a breath and holding the energy of the breath in the heart center. We do it by taking a breath in, and then on top of that in breath, we take another breath without breathing out, and we hold the breath there in the heart center. And while holding the breath, and I'll mirror this for you, while holding the breath, you'll take these actions. I'll just do the whole thing. bit boring to watch. <sighs> so it's quite a long time to hold your breath. So uh, we'll shorten it a bit. <laughs> so we'll only do three of these and three of these and three. <laughs> Normally you do five of these. Uh, it's very, very powerful. Let's do it. So you breathe in. You re-breathe into the heart. Hold your breath. Right arm first. Three. Remember you're massaging your heart. Left arm when you're ready. Three. You're still holding your breath. Right arm, sassy shoulder shimmies. They're not called that in the tradition. And then the other side. And when you're ready, you breathe out. And then you take a deep breath in and deep breath out after that. 
and just feel that centeredness. So these tantric slash hatha techniques are very powerful. Hatha means with force. And tantra uh, doesn't mean forceful, but it indicates a fast path or a direct path for, for reasons we could talk about. Now we're going to bring our legs out of this cross leg position and fold them back. Please feel free to sit on another block or more than one uh, other block. If your knees are tight, you, should, you can sit on two or three or use a blanket as well. I'm on one. I'm going to recommend at least one. This is called Virasana. <clears throat> and there should be no uh, pain in your knees. So if there is, you must, you must sit on more height. The thighs face straight up. The middle of the thighs face straight up. Uh, when you come into the pose, there's ways to make that happen, but we'll talk about that. Uh, you're already there, so we'll talk about that another time. Stretch your arms, thumbs down. Breathe through your nose. Uh, let go of the buttocks. Let go of tension in the buttocks. And necessarily, you know, you can't. This is the thing, which is the great thing. You can't let go of tension in the body without letting go of tension in the mind. Yeah. And that's the great thing. And of course, sometimes we're a bit reticent to let go of tension in the mind because we're attached to certain tensions as if they were ourselves. <sighs> Bless you. Then raise your arms up when you're ready. Lightly tone the tummy in response. So as your arms go back, there's a tendency, of course, for your lower back to go forwards, which is fine and good. But if it keeps going forwards, then you just kind of squash the lower back and you don't get any lift in the central channel, part of which the middle of the central channel we've already felt into in that last practice, which is the heart. The central channel is what it sounds like. It's a channel that's in the center of the body. And it goes all the way up the center of the body anteriorly, anterior to the spine, that is. And feel into it. Some texts tell us that it's like a lotus stalk. Right? Most water plants uh, have a hollow in them. So you could imagine, I'm, I like to imagine it like a lotus stalk and I move it like it's a sort of plant in water and I'm looking for space. Whether you practice tantric yoga or hatha yoga, the central channel is important. Even if you go back to the Vedanta, the early version of the Vedanta, you find central channel uh, is mentioned and you go back further to the Buddha. As even mentioning of keeping the spinal column upright. Huh? Okay, big wide circle, hands to the heart. Deep breath in, deep breath out, and maybe a few more. So breath is everything. It's a bit of a catchphrase, but it's a catchphrase that means something. Huh? Breath is everything. So if you commit to the breath, that's like committing to the goddess, if you're into the Shakta traditions the goddess traditions. The goddess, of course, represents the field that liberates us uh, for reasons I'll explain. Uh, but that, you know, you might have enough faith already without explanation, but either way, we're gonna release the hands. We're gonna come off our blocks, gonna bring the knees together. And then if you if uh, need a block, you can put it between the heels and buttocks, but we're just coming to a regular kneeling, so not everyone will, but many of us We'll find a block useful. This is called Vajra. Now, if you don't know what a Vajra is, uh, there's a Vishva Vajra on that drum over there. And there's a Vishva Vajra on the ceiling up there as well. So Vishva Vajra is a cross Vajra. Vishva doesn't mean crossed. It's uh, kind of, uh, a vad Vishva Vajra represents the entire universe. So that's uh, kind of exactly this one. It is exactly the same as what the goddess represents. Different traditions do it in different ways. <clears throat> the goddess traditions, of course, went through Buddhism, Shaivism, Vaishnavism, and so on. Stretch, uh, interlace your fingers, stretch your arms. Raise the arms up with toned tummy. Make sure as you go up that you've got this uh, servitude to flow. <laughs> so the yogin is in service, in bhakti, you could say, or seva, to flow. All right, so if you, it, being of service or devoted is very important quality in yoga. You know, even in the Buddhist center, there's lots of iconography around, and every single piece of iconography, iconography is supposed to invoke a sense of uh, faith or, uh, or confidence that makes you want to give. So every time you see a piece of 
South Asian iconography, even if you don't understand what it is, it's trying to say to you, give, right? Give. Mm -hmm. And what are you giving to? And what are you giving? You're giving to the field where everything's interdependent. And what you're giving is this constructed sense of independent <laughs> cells, right? So you give to the field, and the result of that is that clinging is negated. And what that means is that there's flow. <laughs> Big wide circle gang. Good job. Hands to the heart again. Similarly intimating heart. Breaths come and go. Interesting nerd fact is that when you're spelling heart in Sanskrit, all you've got to do is take out the vowels from the English word heart and you get the Sanskrit word heart, hrit, H-R-T, hrit. That's Sanskrit for heart. Just add an E and an A and you've got the English word for heart. That isn't a coincidence. It's because the languages are connected. Now release your hands and come off uh, a block if you're on a block or just bring your legs out in front of you. <clears throat> and hold your big toes. Oh, I just had a realization. It doesn't affect you, but it affects the zoomers. You carry on, hold your big toes. Okay, so hold your big toes with your index finger, middle finger, and thumb. I might pronounce the B in that actually. Index finger, middle finger, and thumb. And then lean back until your feet come off. Oh, I should say, as a warning, don't fall off the back of your mat, right? So don't be too far back on the mat because it's not, it's a tiny ledge, but it does feel uncomfortable if you fall off the back. So don't be too far back. Lean back, great way to massage the buttocks, right? So you can move this way or that. We felt already uh, perhaps how the buttocks can hold tension. That's sort of quite uh, it's like secret tension. <laughs> We get very aware if we've got a tense neck, we're very aware if we've got tense shoulders, but not many of us are very aware when our buttocks are tightened, right? And we're even less likely uh, to ask anyone for assistance if we've got tense buttocks. <laughs> we might say to someone, oh, my shoulders, would you mind? But it's, you know, even in the office, you might say to a friend in the office, would you mind? Oh, thanks. Oh, that's, that's great. But you wouldn't, I presume, <laughs> ask them to do the same for your buttocks, huh? Yes, that's where there's secret tension. <laughs> so, but you can do it yourself. Now, it sometimes comes intuitive that you want to extend your legs. That's fine, a bit or a lot, both or sometimes. The pose is called ubaya. Uh, ubaya means both, right? So both and padangusta is big toes. Ubaya padangusta asana, asana. Uh, sort of semantically drifted in some texts to mean posture. Breathe and move in any way that opens your breath up. Breathe and move in any way that opens your breath up. Right? So if your legs being straight and your breath isn't opened up, then try, you know, bending or, or if they're bent and their breath isn't opening, try straightening. <laughs> They can be apart, they can be together. I know it, it, that old song, it ain't what you do, but the way that you do it, it does apply. Mm. Breathing natural, breathing easy. Okay, take hold of your ankles and bring your feet together. Baddha Konasana. I like a little wiggle, not just here, but in life generally, but that's another matter. But here it's a good, really good place to wiggle because you can, when you wiggle, if you lean to the left, your adductors on the right for a moment will release, right? If you, you'll probably feel it. It's just a moment when you lean, it doesn't happen straight away, it just happens about one second after. There's a little release to the opposite side. Some people hold the ankles, some people hold their feet. You can even use a belt around the feet if you want. There's a lot of variations in Baddha Konasana. Breath is everything. Breath, brain, body, universe are one thing. That's interesting, isn't it? That's interesting. 
but it's more than you know interesting is not what yogin uh, the yogis the yogis uh, focus the yogis foc focus is the direct and immediate realization that everything's one and so that means that they their body releases because they know it's connected to their mind and breath you can't expect your body to release without understanding your breath and mind will need to release at the same time. Yeah? So this is giving dana, the first of the perfections if you're into Mahayana Buddhism. This is quite nice Buddhism to be into. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> giving dana. Sounds like the English word donor. It's cognate. So this is the joy of yoga, but also at uh, first it can be part of uh, a little bit of resistance because, you know, we want the body to release, but sometimes we subconsciously are attached to ideas about the future, memories of the past, right? Or ideas about ourselves in the present. We're attached to those. Mm. so sometimes a little unwilling to let them go mm. but letting go <laughs> means you release this sense of uh, self mm. which is exactly what you do if you go dancing and you enjoy it yeah. it's like ah you, when you release your sense of self you find your sense of self tada drastu swarupe avastanam Anjali's way of saying it in Sanskrit. So move and breathe. Give and serve. Swami Vivekananda emphasized service. Is that part of your yoga now? Uh, no, it's no good to read it. Swami Vivekananda said service is part of yoga. We like Swami Vivekananda. Mm -hmm. If it's not now, then it's not anything. Do you see? Service is now. Okay. <laughs> nice and easy release from that pose. We're coming to Upavista Konasana. So that's a relatively wide stride. It's not the widest stride we can take, and many of us will be better off sitting on a block. The block <coughs> will be placed skewing. That is to say, not this way or this way, but this way. So that the corner of the block <coughs> just protrudes forwards in front of the pubic synthesis. That's a little slip of cartilage between the two halves of the pubic bone. So just tiny little bit of the block protrudes forwards. Most people will benefit from sitting on a block. Toes face up. <clears throat> Those of you who are, uh, you know, a little bit sort of nerdy and a little bit uptight will enjoy getting the exact angles on both sides. That's me. I'm quite enjoying that. <clears throat> a little bit nerdy, a little bit uptight. <laughs> and then you can take your hands cupped like a bear's hand. Good. And then take your hands like a bear's hand. Oh, that's a cute bear. And then bring your cupped hands on the floor behind you and roll your shoulder blades down your back and lift your chest up. It's one action. Tummy's involved as well. So roll your shoulder blades down your back and then tummy's lightly toned. If I were to press your tummy, I won't. Wouldn't be right to put it. should be like that. It's not like that all the time. It's, it's toned like a, like a guitar string is tuned or something like that. It's not tight, but it's toned. Hmm? So it's lightly in and up. And the reason for that is as you roll the shoulder blades down and um, sort of back and down, and then and the chest lifts up, if your tummy's toned, the lift of the chest will pull the front of the pelvis along and lengthen the lower back muscles. Yeah. Look for lightness through play. So play can be left, right, forwards, backwards. Look for lightness through play. Hmm? 
So lightness, of course, is something on all levels, physical, mental, respiratory. Light here meaning uh, not encumbered, like a dandelion seed. One of the pictures that uh, Nate Cordry has painted for the book. I've got a book, but no one to publish it yet. If you want to publish it, please let me know. <laughs> I might have to do that. If you want to contribute to me publishing it myself, please let me know. <laughs> it's one of a set of four that I've... I've uh... <laughs> anyway, this first one is nice and easy. It's got aphorisms. And then uh, I asked Nate uh, if he could paint me a picture of a dandelion seed with the seeds kind of floating off to the aphorism. Because it's light and it's connected with various traditions. I don't go into any of the traditions in the book. It's a very light book. Well, and the third book in the series is a very heavy book. <laughs> so lightness, like a dandelion seed, it intimates the Buddhist uh, ideal of uh, emptiness. <clears throat> the Jain ideal of dropping heavy karmic particles. The Theravadan ideal, Theravadan Buddhist ideal of letting go. <laughs> and so on. Lightness. You should feel it everywhere. But not just, it's not sort of abstracted, it's physical too. You feel lightness in the body. Lightness just shows up in your ability to respond. Lift now and turn towards your right foot. The right foot in this case is actually your right foot. Okay. And then feel energy releasing through your left leg. What does it mean to feel energy releasing? If you think about it, you don't know. Because thinking doesn't feel things subtly. It looks at things in kind of, is this good, is this bad? Is this a good person or a bad person? Is this a right thing or a wrong thing? That's th this is the way thinking does things. Okay? Divides things up. Is this night or is this day? <laughs> do I like this or do I not like On and on. But reality, of course, exists on a much more subtle level. We call it interdependent rather than independent. Thought makes things independent. Reality is interdependent. So you can feel energy releasing in your back leg by giving to your experience like you'd give to a kiss on the cheek from someone you like. Or if the sun kisses your skin in the spring, you might give to that. Right. So there's a sense of sort of surrender into the way things are, which is beyond thinking. We say unmani. Unmani uh, means beyond the mind. <laughs> Lift and turn all the way to the other leg and feel energy releasing through your back leg. A bit like the tail of a comet. So imagine a comet as it moves forwards, it releases a tail behind it or a boat as it moves forwards, it releases a wake behind it. So similarly, as you turn your energy, your attention to your front leg and even look at your toes, feel energy streaming out behind you. <clears throat> And if you release behind you, it will release you forward. So I don't know how many times I've told the story of um, uh, a friend who uh, was on a yoga retreat with me about, I don't know, 18 years ago. And I saw him, it was in Thailand, he had his canoe tied up. And he was a little way away from me, he didn't know I saw him, but he tried to paddle his canoe, but it was tied up. And he's a bright lad, so it took him a few minutes to realize. And then he uh, untied it, and with one single stroke of his paddle, the boat took off. Huh? Similarly, if you release behind you, you'll release forward. So release your back leg, and the body will release you forwards towards the front leg. Right. That's how it is for reasons we could talk about at length. But we've only got an hour and a quarter. Okay, turn back to the front. Catch your breath. Fingers on the floor ahead of you now. Sit up light and tall, which is not something you just instruct like light and tall or not light and tall. I tell you body to be light and tall. 
the eye has to disappear, like it has to disappear in a good hug. You know, one of the things about a beautiful hug is you disappear in it. Huh? Or into dappled light, you know, you get that dappled light, sun coming through leaves. Sometimes you disappear, it's like, I disappear. It doesn't last long. Even just something as mundane as drinking coffee, coffee drinkers, mundane, people who have never even thought about anything spiritual overtly, they still disappear when they take their first sip of coffee. I know, I've seen them do it. They get their coffee like that. Maybe they don't check to see what else they don't even think about. It. And then they smell it and then they sip it and, uh, mm. and then they remember to be busy again and off they go. But there's a second. <laughs> Okay, bring your legs back together. I hope you can. Hope they're not stuck forever. Good job. Okay, lay on your back. Lay on your back. Use a block under your head because it's Saturday. We, we should have a pillow. We should have things comfortable. Rest your hands on your upper chest, whether or not you're wearing a polar neck, doesn't matter. And take, take a few deep breaths. Draw us up. <laughs> so, it's so easy that's what makes things difficult I don't think it's very hard to guess that I might have once been quite overtly a hippie well, I'm probably fairly overt now apart from the polar neck maybe so, do you think you're not oh thank you very much thank you very much I was a sort of a, a newer first of a hippie a hippie Younger hippie in the 80s, an 80s hippie. <laughs> so I was, I did have a caftan, I did have long hair, I did eat lentils, I liked patchouli, all of that. I had a C and D sticker in my window, everything, the whole kit caboodle. And amongst that, I also liked bands such as Pink Floyd, Gong, and even Hawkwind, I have to admit. <laughs> and Hawkwind had a song, which I still like, and I've recently revisited, called It's So Easy, right? and it was one of my favorites. And that's the problem with the spiritual life. Right? It's so easy, we, we always think there must be something more to it. Mm. But one of the traditions, the Mahamudra, uh, or as it became known as it moved into the Tibetan tradition, Dzogchen, emphasizes, Dzogchen means perfection, the great perfection. Mahamudra means the great seal. So everything's as it needs to be for enlightenment to happen because everything is already interdependent. So clinging is going to be negated if you just rest into the way things are. And when clinging is negated, then you fall back into your true nature, <laughs> which is free. Uh, anyway, I'm mentioning all that because you're laying on your back and you, you know it's nice. <laughs> Raise a leg if you like uh, anything hippie. Oh, most people like something hippie, don't they? A hippie-ish. And then move your foot backwards and forwards. I don't like to limit myself to hippie stuff. I like all sorts of stuff. But anyway, move your foot backwards and forwards. This is called Dor Dorsey plantar flexion. And of course, you're using your uh, shin muscles and calf muscles and even into the thighs. And of course, movement hydrates. And hydration of the body is hydration of the mind. What does that mean? It doesn't mean there's a physical hydration of the body that causes flow. And then there's a sort of metaphorical hydration in the mind, which causes flow. They happen together because they're the same for many reasons that are obvious, if you think about it. Once you've got that hydration, that flow going, then turn your heel in, toes out, cross that leg over the other one, go beyond the outer ankle, go beyond the lateral malleolus, the outer ankle. Keep your foot dorsiflexed. That means your foot is as it would be if you were just standing on the floor. It's not pointed. It's just like it would be on the floor. Lift the foot that's on the floor, off the floor. You got it. You got it. Then lift your head. Punch through the gap between the legs. Interlace your finger around your far shin or back thigh. Then bring your head back down and roll about a bit. This is, called, this is one of two poses called Suchirandrasana. Suchir means uh, thread. So Suchir Andrasana is threading, Suchir, threading the needle. Huh? So this is thread, a needle thread, huh? threading the needle. And as you roll around, you might find moments that are rich, 
like a coffee drinker. I mean, coffee's a really rich flavor. When I was a kid, I couldn't understand. In fact, it's only this year that I've started occasionally drinking a coffee. This year, I've become a grown up, 52 years old. <laughs> but only decaffeinated, for obvious reasons, if you know my personality. Decaffeinated coffee. <laughs> so, but it's so rich, you know, that flavor of coffee is so rich. And that's why coffee drinkers disappear into the infinite when they drink it. Not that they say that, but it's intimated. Even coffee adverts have people closing their eyes like they're in meditation when they sip their coffee. Mm -hmm. Find the richness in the stretch. Richness can be found in a stretch, it can be found in coffee, it can be found in a kiss, it can be found in dappled light, it can be found in the smell of jasmine flowers or roses. Uh, it's found everywhere. And the moment you find it, <laughs> there's liberation. Hmm. Okay. okay, if you're ready to release, then go ahead and release and place both feet back on the floor. You might want to scoot the buttocks under, taking two or three deep breaths. Sometimes it's sigh-like breaths, which is really lovely to enjoy. Sigh-like breaths. A sigh is a way of giving, isn't it? And, and this intimates the joy of giving. <laughs> When we give, we often, the, one of the reasons the goddess traditions became so uh, prevalent in the 8th, 9th, 10th centuries is because it's a great way of putting it. It's like a mother, like a goddess, the field. Originally, the term for the field, for nature, was prakriti, a feminine term. Hmm. Let's raise up the other leg. Hmm. So if you give to the field, the field absorbs you like a sort of like the idealized version of a mother. I have to say that because, you know, people have various opinions about their mothers and uh, some of them have great, some people have great opinions and some people have mixed opinions about their mothers. But you can have an idealized mother. <laughs> it sort of takes you to her breast, as it were. You step towards her, the, the tradition says, one, you take one step towards the goddess. She takes 10 towards you. So the goddess is the field, the richness of every moment that can take you into the interdependent richness. So the taste of coffee takes you beyond itself into the goddess. <laughs> even if it's just for a moment, even if you don't recognize that, even if you wouldn't dream of using language like the goddess. <laughs> Now, when you're ready, heel in, toes out, cross that leg over the other. You got it. Go beyond the lateral malleolus. I have to say things like lateral malleolus so you think I'm worth paying for my job because it's just a sort of clever dick way of saying outer ankle. And then you lift the foot that's on the floor, off the floor, lift your head. There's a gap between the legs, plunge through it into legs, roll around. And your purpose, your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to find richness and let it eat you. <laughs> so in the book, which you might be helping me publish, who knows? In the, in the book, there's another, these tiny little aphorisms. And I asked Nate, could you paint me or do you already have a picture of anybody on stepping stones? Because the metaphor is stepping stones. And lo and behold, suddenly he painted one and there it was. Thank you very much, Nate. Incredible work, very fast. So what is the metaphor of the stepping stones? First step is sense, a rich sensation, like stretch in yogasana, or like coffee, right? or whatever's rich. Anything is rich, everything is rich if you, you know, if you can open up to it. But that's, there are two stepping stones crossing over the river. The first is richness. The second is giving to that richness. You can't cross the river without going on both stepping stones. 
By the way, the river itself represents the two shores, one of independent experience, the other of interdependent experience. You cross into the interdependent and clinging is negated. When the Buddha was asked, what do you teach? He said, oh, just the fact that everything's interdependent. People were like, oh, all right, but I'll move on then. You know, but actually it's a very powerful. Everything's interdependent. It's called conditioned co-production. Yeah. Okay, release when you're ready. Place the feet down. Let's hear a deep breath from everyone and at home. Mm, take a few. Now let yourself, allow yourself to have deep breaths. Now, because I'm someone who's uh, the age that I am, uh, I quite liked, for a brief moment in time, Frankie Goes to Hollywood. You remember Frankie Goes to Hollywood with their controversial song, Relax, very saucy, very naughty. And then they did a song called The Power of Love. And it has one lyric in it, it says, let yourself be beautiful. Yeah? So that's what's being intimated now. <laughs> right? It doesn't mean like try and be beautiful. It's not that, let yourself. All right, so that just like, you know, relax, isn't it? Roll over when you're ready and roll towards this side of the room or, or you know, if you're at home, you can roll it any direction, perhaps towards the camera. And pop yourself up on your forearm, like I'm doing here. I'm rolling up my sleeve for two reasons. One is it's better, I get better feedback if I don't have clothing directly on the floor. But the other is this jumper is cashmere. I don't want it to wear out. Okay. <laughs> One leg behind you, fingers on the floor ahead of you, hand as if you're holding whatever you like, a bunch of flowers, perhaps. Lift up. Breathe calmly. Flow. So the Sanskrit word vahi. I'm running a workshop at the end of May, which is called Flow Yoga, which is a sort of, uh, what is it? Um, it's like an expansion on the principle of flow. And of course, a lot, of, a lot of the time, this phenomena has hit yoga studios around the world of flow yoga, based on vinyasa and so on. But I'm not doing that form, but I'm exploring what flow is in that workshop and now here too. Vahi. What is flow? Hmm? It's where your breath flows, where your body flows, where the mind flows. And spontaneity rules. So you can do anything. You don't have to. The, one thing that's good to know about yoga is most of the postures aren't traditional that we do in modern postural classes. They're not traditional. So you don't have to think, oh, am I honoring the traditional version of this? There isn't a traditional version of this pose. This is quite a modern pose. Okay, come down. And knees out. Move slow if you want or quick if you want. I don't mind. Still face this side of the room where you will perhaps be facing uh, Avalokiteshwara or Manjushri or just this lovely shrine. On your forearm, on your ulna bone, hand as if you're holding a bunch of flowers, the other arm behind you, breathing through your nose. Light tone in the tummy. Light means that it's not heavy. <laughs> I mean, it means that, and if something's light, think about a dandelion seed. How able is that to respond to subtle currents of the air that you can't even feel? I love watching dandelion seeds because they, they're responding because they're light, right? So that means you're available to respond. That means you're, you can be wise and compassionate. Raise up when you're ready and play. So you could raise your back heel if you want. I, I like doing that. I seem to like doing that today. So you could do it if you want, or you might not want to. That's fine too. You can have your top arm up or not. You can have it over or down, anywhere you like. You know, the, well, it's not anywhere you like. It's not a free for all. It's just anywhere that conduces to flow. Mm. Mm. You know it's flow if your breath is flowing, you see? Mm. Hmm. You know it's flow if your breath is flowing. 
And we get snagged. You know, there are little grunties in the body. They're called grunties, little knots. And like going through the forest, you can sometimes get your clothing snagged. And, you know, we want to try and move through the forest without getting caught. <laughs> So slow. Okay, well done. Slow. <laughs> Descend. Knees up, particularly if you're called Mother Brown, and then over to the other side. Sorry, I couldn't resist. <clears throat> now we're going to rest ourselves on our elbow. And then lengthen the bottom side of the body. So take a hand, lift and lengthen the bottom ribs a few times. Lift and uh, open up. The armpit as well and then roll about a bit if you roll forwards and backwards you'll feel the iliotibial tract and through to the quadricep muscles the iliotibial tract has a few functions one of them is to stabilize your knee but it's a strong band very strong band of connective tissue and it gets tender it gets tight it's toned by the tensor fascia latter, if you can't remember that, just think transport for London. And also the gluteus maximus. So if you roll forwards and backwards, you might find sensations that are juicy. Or you might find one of the snags, one of the things you get caught on, the past, the future, or ideas about yourself in the present. <laughs> So if you get caught on a past, the future, or idea about yourself in the present, recognize that with an open, relaxed, kind mind. <laughs> Kindness is essential. For concentration, concentration is essential for absorption. And absorption is essential for seeing, <laughs> and seeing is essential for letting go, and letting go is essential for remembering what is free about you. <laughs> now, once you rolled about, I could roll about for ages. I don't know about you, but I like it. Maybe I should get out more, but I like it. We're gonna bring the top leg and just play it within the planes between horizontal and vertical. And there's a purpose to our play. You can do anything. I mean, I sometimes like to shake my leg up. You know, I'm not saying you won't want to, but anything that conduces to coming together of the various fibers of the body. And that means the mind as well, because fibers of the body get arrested by um, mental habits. And remember at the beginning of the class, we said we can reverse engineer. We can release a cause. Oh, sorry, we can release a symptom and thereby release its cause. Right? So if different fibers of the body are not agreeing with the pose, that's because they're preoccupied, get them to come on board through jostling and realignment. And then the mind also will be letting go of what's driving tension, resistant tension into the body. Eventually the leg will end up uh, in this upright position with more integrity. That's the point. So I'm shaking my leg intuitively. That's you. you yeah, you could do it. I don't know what you need to do, but your breath does. Your breath knows. Now, when you're ready, take your fingers to your toe more than your toe to your fingers. So it's quite a discipline because it's really, you know, because we're restless. Aren't we? We're like, oh, God, come on. I can't be bothered to wait, you know, but, uh, you know, take it slow. You might have to take your foot a bit to your hand, but try to minimize that and take your hand as much to the foot. Now, you know you're holding the right way because once you've got hold, if you extend your thumb up, it says thumbs up, right? So you've got the wrong way. It's like, mm -mm, thumbs down. Then extend your leg by degrees. This, is, this pose is called anantasana. Ananta uh, means eternal. <laughs> it's also the name of a particular serpent that um, Vishnu rests on, right? This is the kind, apparently the kind of furniture that gods have. They, they don't have, you know, um, Ikea or... <laughs> they have eternal serpents <laughs> that they rest on. 
breathing through your nose. Good job. Bring your leg down slow, calm, easy. Head down, knees up, curl up from the side, cool, calm, collected. We're going to the other side. Yes, the cashmere's coming off. So go, go to the other side. I know I've ruined the look now. The uh, polar neck and tiny shorts. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. We're going to open the door. We're going to let the sun shine in. She's a marvelous line from a song in the hippie musical Hair. <laughs> Extend the bottom the ribs a few times and the armpit. My mum and dad saw the original production of Hair, actually, and you might think, oh, no wonder you ended up yoga teacher with hippie parents. My parents are not hippies, not by any stretch of any imagination. My dad wears a cravat and loves Gilbert and Sullivan. It was an accident. They didn't know what they were letting themselves in for. <laughs> Well, that's, yeah, maybe that's true. That's what they told me. Really knew exactly what they were letting themselves in for. Oh, Simon, I, you're right. Gosh, I hadn't realized until now. You're right. And it wasn't a naked show. It was, they were naked, exactly. Paul Nicholas. That's right. They even told me that they were naked people. As they were taking acid or pretending to take acid. And there was Kay and Melvin. Melvin wearing his cravat, loving every minute of it, no doubt, so I now realise. Now, let's bring the top leg up and move it around. Breathe easy. I suppose if you like Gilbert and Sullivan, you're up for anything, aren't you, really? <laughs> Take a few breaths and just look for the, <laughs> the richness. My dad's actually the biggest collector of Gilbert and Sullivan memorabilia in the world. That's a fact. Is it? It's a fact, yeah. <laughs> he even has a weird book on Amazon you can buy. You look it up if you like, Melvin Tarrant, which is the Gilbert and Sullivan cookbook. It's filled with terrible recipes that you would never want to eat. <laughs> you have to they're collected from members of the Doily Car Opera. Oh, honestly, it goes on. I won't bore you with it. <laughs> a friend of his has just bought Doily Car Island. In the Thames. It's a real place, Doily Cart Island. It was owned by Sir Richard Doily Cart. That's the end of the Gilbert and Sullivan bit of the class. Anyway, we're, while, while we're hearing that information, we're bringing the leg around and <laughs> releasing various fibers, relaxing. You know, nothing to grasp. It's empty of grasping, a parigraha. The word graha means to grasp. The word grace in Sanskrit is anugraha. Anugraha means after grasping. There's grace, right? Which is kind of cool. If you're ready, when you're ready, if the legs come up with integrity and it feels good, you know, like powerfully good. The word for, for the goddess is often the same word as power, shakti. And then you hold your big toe if you want. Try your best to slow down and hold your toe, bring your hand to your toe more than your toe to your hand and go through the inside of your leg. Rather than the outside, go to the inside. Breath is everything. Begin to extend your leg by degrees. It can move forwards and or backwards. The point is using your body a bit like, I don't know if you know what these are, but dowsing rods, right? <laughs> now I know about dowsing rods because they seem to always be on Blue Peter in the 1980s. I don't know why. There was always someone dowsing on Blue Peter in the 1980s in my memory, or maybe it just struck me. Dowsing rods, you hold them in your hand. You can use, uh, I even made some myself in the 1980s. In 1982, I made myself some dowsing rods. You can even, you can, out of uh, coat hangers, you can make them apparently. Hold them in your hand, and if they cross over, and if you're a good dowser, there's water there, apparently. Right? So similarly, you can use your body, its sort of movements to tune in. Not so much on water, but on flow, which is connected, isn't it? Tuning in on flow. Psychophysical respiratory flow. You got it. 
Anantasana. Okay, I could lose myself there. I hope you will feel the same. We'll come down. Knees up, come up, go back down on the first side again. Backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. Okay, bend the leg that you're laying on. So what I call 90 degrees. It's what everyone calls 90 degrees. It's 90 degrees between the calf and the thigh and between the thigh and the tummy. Two sets to check those 90 degrees. The bottom leg, I'm checking for you. That foot towards mama. That bottom leg foot, no, the other one, towards Manjushri, the bent leg foot, towards, you got it. Extend the psoas, the iliac psoas. So the iliacus and psoas connect in on the top of the inner thigh. They come across the lateral pubis, and that's where the iliacus ends on the back of the pelvis. And then the psoas continues and connects to the sides of the lower spine. It's a muscle. Muscles are made of um, muscle fascia and muscle cells. And muscle fascia and muscle cells respond to nerves. So, and nerves respond to attitude, don't they? Mm -hmm. So if you have an attitude, the best attitude that conduce, is the one that conduces to the muscle softening and being able to extend. You find for yourself what attitude that is. It could be an attitude of just con just profound contentment. It could be an attitude of gratitude. Huh? I, oh, I love, I love, I love. <laughs> Whatever it is, you know, find it for yourself here and now. What softens? And then as that muscle softens, you extend it. And then you land it. And do that several times. Lifting, extending, landing. Mm -hmm. Lifting, extending, landing. The landing is there so that there's a moment where that extension can be held in extension. Resistance to that extension begins to dissipate. That's making us lighter because that resistance is patterns in our body that cause us bias in our perception, in our actions. Without bias, we become light, like a dandelion seed, and we can respond. Suck in the tum, in and up, push the hands down, lift, turn, it's elbows, forearms, and wrists on the floor. This pose in, in this school of yoga, Vajrasati Yoga, uh, we call Shayana Marichasana. Shayana means to rest. And Marichi is the name of a sage, so it's resting sage. And move around intuitively, breathe into it. You might move forwards, backwards, you're disappearing. <laughs> disappearing and reappearing. Mm. Like if you disappear into a hug, you reappear in your true form, free, pure. Mm. Mm. The, what I call the great before, before any of the events that we think of marked us have happened, there's the great before before you remember to be somebody when you wake up in the morning as a split second before you remember any of your responsibilities or problems. <laughs> top leg on top of the bottom leg, curl up from the side. You got it, there's a lot of this. And go to, I was gonna call it side two, but I'll call it side B, B the B side. <laughs> Bend the leg. You're laying on. Now, the metaphor of a record works pretty well because the independent and the interdependent are the same thing. In some traditions, it's said that samsara and nirvana are one. It's just flipping the mm. paradigm, you know? So to do that, get into the psoas, you know, stretch the psoas. So, and to stretch the psoas, know that the psoas is not a muscle that exists separate to the way you breathe, the way you think, but a muscle that exists completely interdependently with the way you breathe and the way you think. And the way you feel. <clears throat> so keep the jaw soft, lift and extend multiple times. And every time you land, there's a moment where whatever extension happened through that softening, 
can be held in extension and resistance to it has a chance to release its release is the lightening of our very being <laughs> and uh, you know i love that title the unbearable lightness of being because you know that is the issue that we have it's sort of <laughs> we're so habituate, habituated to not be light that it can be difficult for us to bear being light that's our challenge That's the enlightenment. You know, the Buddha was able to bear being light. <laughs> That's all. If you're ready, suck in, pull forwards, lift and turn. Elbows, forearms, wrists. Shayana Marichasana. Marichi. That's great. Sage. We can also talk about all of this on a mundane level. We can say on a mundane level that the thorough columbar fascia on the back of the body, which thickens, like all fascia th thickens, in dependence on our position. If we sit in some positions more than others, then fascia will thicken. Sometimes fascia will thicken to support muscles that are atrophied as well. Or habits, body-mind habits. So that thorough columbar fascia, if it thickens too much, can press on nerves and cause back pain. Not only that, but it can also ca cause general pressure uh, on the blood flow. Mm -hmm. When we melt that fascia through movement here and now, when we hydrate it here and now, pressure on nerves is released, pressure on blood vessels is released, pressure on lymph channels is released. In other words, our pain levels go down, our stimulated levels go down, our blood pressure is reduced, our sense of ease is increased, and we begin to be experiencing directly interdependence, which means immediately without trying, one's clinging is negated. Because if everything's interdependent, there's nothing anywhere that can be seen to cling to. Top leg on top of the bottom leg, curl on up and come to hands and knees. Come to hands and knees. Ready for Adho Mukha Svanasana. Adho Mukha Svanasana, down face dog. In earlier texts, this is called Gajasana, Gaja meaning elephant. So just check your hands a level with the sides of the mat, really precisely. If you're a, someone who likes precision, if you're a little bit uptight, uh, this is your time to really shine, you know, <laughs> let your uptightness out and let, you know, let it be an asset. So I'm, I love it. <laughs> and then lift up your derriere and when you're ready and push from front to back. You might pad your hands into a deeper weave into the mat. Some people slip on these yoga mats. We have got some new ones lined up. I don't know when they're coming. They are lined up. But if you do slip, one thing you could do, there's a couple of things you can do. You can hold the edges of the mat, the sides of the mat, like this, or you can use a belt underneath the heels of the hands. That also can increase the grip. And the other thing will sound facetious. Uh, if you're slipping, then stop sweating, you know, because then you might think that's facetious. I can't just stop sweating. Actually, you can. Uh, and that's because sweat uh, is partly a symptom of attitude. So if we become really sort of calm, it reduces the amount of sweat that comes out. So that does help. The heels stretch back, the groins lift up, the thighs draw up, the chest opens, and we feel through our backs. We feel through the back, particularly the lower back. We'd like to feel energy many times flowing through the lower back. Some people make that impossible to feel by jamming the heels down prematurely. Focus on your back. Get some energy flowing through. Well done, everyone. Come down slow and easy. To a regular kneeling position, you might want to put a block between your heels and buttocks if you're tight uh, in the knees at all. One hand resting on the other, breathing through your nose. Oh, what was that normal? It's just slightly too far away, isn't it? <laughs> breathe, breathe easy to yourself, resting one hand on top of the other. Bhairavi or Bhairava Mudra. Bhairavi and Bhairava are wrathful forms of Shiva. 
featuring in uh, both Shaivism and uh, Tantric Buddhism. And it depends which one you're, you're taking Bhairavi or Bhairava, depending on whether your right hand's on top or your left, but they're both forms of Shiva and Shiva represents consciousness before manifestation. So in the Shaiva tradition, it's juxtaposed against Shakti, Shiva. Pure consciousness, Shakti, that which manifests. And in the, uh, some schools of Tantra, they're, they're viewed as interdependent, inseparable. Something you also get in, in Buddhism with the yab yam images of um, Buddhas and consorts. Um, a few deep breaths. Now we're going to take our knees apart. Toes are touching, but not overlapping. So knees apart, toes are touching, but not overlapping. And we're going to come forwards real slow, letting the groins drop. So slow and so much is the groins dropping that you hardly need any support ahead of you at first. Any movement forwards is accompanied by this melting at the groins. So it slows you down a lot, which is good because what drives us is not us, but, but habit, conditioning, reactivity. So not only does it slow you down a lot, you, when you bring your hands onto the floor, there's hardly any weight then, and the groins keep dropping. But also this frees up the psoas, so the psoas isn't sort of dragged along with us, the root of the psoas muscle is settled. And so the rest of the psoas can release. And the psoas, of course, is a muscle that's very central to how all the muscles feel because of its connection to the diaphragm. And so the signal from the psoas and the diaphragm signal to the whole body. Um, Trust, they say. Surrender, they say. Give, they say. And what you give to is the goddess. And what the goddess does is express. Karana shakti swato nubhavat. What the goddess does is express. Karana shakti swato nubhavat. Well, nubhavat means your fundamental, truest experience. Karana can mean expression. The power of the goddess expresses from your truest experience. So your truest experience is powerful. It's expressive. It's effective. It's wise. Bringing yourself slow and easy up with still that same sense of dropping in the groins. And time is racing by, has raced by, officially we're at the end of the class. I can't believe it, but officially we are. But we must do a Shavasana, mustn't tweet. So we're going to come into Shavasana. Make sure you're warm. There are blankets. Uh, if you, you might think, oh, I know there are blankets, but I'm here and they're there. I can't, be, but I'm going to bring them in. So you don't even have to worry about it. So here come some blankets to make you feel warmer and happier. There we go. Blankets, if you want a blanket, there's one near you now. You can sling it. Well, I'm saying that for people here, of course, in the class, but not, I can't bring one to you at home, Zoomers. I don't have the time. I do have a moped, but it's quite slow. 31 miles an hour is the top speed on that moped. <laughs> it's electric, you see. It's environmentally friendly, but it's very slow. When you lay down, scoot your shoulder blades under. Head support is often useful. Hmm? 
we find this pose listed in the four practices in the third text, third or maybe fourth, some confusion around that, of, of Hatha Yoga, the text known as the Data Treya Yoga Shastra. And it says, find a place you can be on your own. You don't have to be anybody. And lay on your back with your mouth facing the sky as if you were dead. With limbs completely loose. Bearing in mind the idea of the practice is to disappear into the field. It suggests, it says the, the actual words it says is look at the big toe of your left or right foot. But that means just feel it, perceive it because everything is everything. You can go through anything to the field. So the tinglings, the sensations of temperature in the big toe are all driven by everything else, by breath, by brain, by body, by society, by weather. And as soon as you touch the goddess, she brings you to her breast. There's nothing to cling to. And so you fall into your true nature, which can't be grasped, but is free. Go your toes and your fingers, wrists, ankles, just a little movement, like you're just feeling into the body. And this is a really lovely feeling, actually. When you feel ready, bend your legs and place the soles of the feet onto the floor. Scooting under the buttocks, the lower back releases entirely into the breath. Roll when you're ready onto your side. If you're in the room here with a live, then roll away from the shrine side of the room. Otherwise, roll to your left if you're at home, zooming in. Okay. 
Lay as comfortably as you can on your side. Roll again when you feel ready and lay as comfortably as you can on your other side. And a bit of light and color in gently, sound and sensation. You might rub your eyes, or stretch out an arm or a leg. When you feel ready to come up, bring yourself up nice and easy from the side. Bring your hands to your heart center. Sanskrit word for yes or so be it is Om. May the merit gained in erecting dust go to the alleviation of the suffering of all beings. Om. 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 Thanks for coming. Much appreciated. Thanks, Zoomers, as well. See you real soon. Uh, don't forget, there's a workshop on the 8th and the 28th. The 8th at Space Studios, which is Preston Park, very beautiful studio. And on the 28th at the BNHC, the Brighton Natural Health Centre, which is just over there. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Jim. Katine's got a chair workshop on the 21st as well. So there's workshops every year here. It's 8th, 21st, 28th. Workshops everywhere. Just do them all. If you forget any of them, text me. I'll tell you them all. Love you. Be good.